that the summary of the one being led who is dependent in that life is this. He said, the wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it is cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Do you know the implication of this thing? Even, mean, even you yourself, you can't predict yourself. You can wake up to dance and tell somebody last night, I will meet you by 7 a.m. in school. Please be there early. You wake up this morning fully dressed. You, you've not been taking pap for the past six months. Appetite for pap will come. Here, yeah, pap this morning. Okay, let me take pap. The moment you are done taking the pap, sleep will come. Okay, let me sleep more. The next time you are waking by one. You don't know what the spirit has saved you from. Because if you had met that person by seven, there will be a court fight in the school. And somebody will be killed. And police will arrest everybody, including you. And the one leading you says no. You can't go to prison. You've proposed that you'll be in school. Admitted that you are not in charge. Instead of complaining, you say, I don't know what you are doing. But thank you. You know where the wind is coming. You don't even know where it's coming. You don't know where it's going. You can only hear the sound. So it's not just that people cannot predict you. You too, you can predict yourself. In view of this, after you have your big plans and good visions, admit that these things will fail. And even if it fail, I'm still being led. You can't predict a man led by the Spirit. Don't go and start boasting he's coming. He might not come up because he doesn't own himself. So if you said you are being led by the Spirit, you must be flexible. What you are doing is to write a letter. When you have done writing the letter, you pass it to God and say, God, sign it, sign it. That's what we do through prayer. Oh, Lord, my father, this year, my husband will locate me. My car, I will go to China, abroad, in Jesus' name. Amen. December come, nothing happens. And the next time they invite you to us, they say, I'm tired of this church, church thing. God, God, this, this, this church, I'm tired of this tithe. I've been tithing for the past five years. It's because you are leading yourself. You've not admitted that. Can I tell you something? I studied my Bible. I, find, I found something more powerful than prayer. There is one thing prayer cannot change. It is called the will of God. Even Jesus prayed for three hours. He could not change that one. He said, Lord, not my will. So he admitted that there is a will. So after you prayed, oh Lord, my father, change my story. Do you, have you ever, have you, have you find out his will? If you are with me, say hallelujah. First John chapter 5 verse 14, let me show you something. The only prayer God answers is when you pray according to his will. So stop blaming your pastor for being a fake pastor. It's not the pastor. Stop blaming yourself that your prayer is not powerful. It's not you. You are just praying outside his will. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, but there is a condition of that thing, according to his will, he will not answer. After quoting ask, you shall receive. Remember to ask according to will. Not anyhow ask. So I said, God, take me to London. God says, I'm taking you to Ikolodu. I said, my village people are in charge. No, sir. Have you asked him his will? Because believers have not come to admit that the God we serve have a will. And the day he made you, he says, I know the plans I have for you. So even God has plans. Have you found out that plan? Or are you just telling him about your own plan? Because what we are doing in church is to tell him our plan, our plan, our plan. And we'll add Jesus' name in it. No. God, what is your will for me? 2024 is coming. I'm coming to you. That's why people that are spiritual go on the street. We think they don't have plans too. No. They are venting their plan to know his own plan. So right there he can tell you, don't travel this year. I know you've planned that you are telling them I'm coming back to village. They need to see me. But they plan to poison you. When you go to pray, he say no travel. You will say, ah, but I've, I've called my mother to buy a bike. I've, I've booked hotel. I've done this. They are waiting to bury you in village. And the one who owns you said no travel this year. You will force it when you get to park. They say motor has, there's no car today. You go tomorrow, they say the, the transport fare is times two. You go the next day, they'll steal the wallet. You go back and cry. You are not in charge, he's in charge. God's will is bigger than any prayer. Prayer is not the master key. Prayer is only one of the key. Let me say it again. Prayer is never the master key. The long song is one of the keys. Jesus is the only key. When you find the key, which is I am the way, the keys, then you begin to ask him his will. What is your will for me? When you find out his plan, you align. If you are here, say hallelujah. hallelujah. People will misunderstand you. 
People will misjudge you. Forgive yourself, you are not in charge. I'm not leading myself, it's leading me. There is always something he's doing. Because the reason why we are always too rigid is because we don't admit that we don't know it all. I've told somebody, Oga, I prophesy and I miss it sometimes. I'm a human being. I'm not God. There are some prophecies I've given that I went to and said, ah, I missed this one. No. Yes, admit you are a human being. You can malfunction. Have you lived this life before? Have you been married before? You only be married once in a lifetime. So you make mistakes in that marriage. Forgive yourself. I've never lived, I've not been to Nigeria before. I was just born in Nigeria. I'm growing in Nigeria. I can make mistakes in Nigeria. But the way we act, we act as if we know everything. That, and that's why we are judging people. We don't admit that we are limited. Show me say hallelujah. So many of us are like Joseph. Who God has been leading. He came to a point, he thought he's the one leading himself. The Bible says that Joseph was so that be. But then the, the prophet in Psalms 105 verse 17 says he sent him. Which means God is leading Joseph. Because if he's leading you, his leading can even be them kidnapping you. It's part of the leading. Why you are shouting prayer in that car? God will be there like this. Because there is someone he wants you to preach to in the camp. After you are done shouting, you sleep in that motor. Take you to the camp. You will pray again. Lord, where are you? God of Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, Israel, Israel, Israel. He will not answer you. When you met, meet the person there, you preach the gospel to, to the person. Maybe it's even from there you meet your breakthrough. It, that God is leading you doesn't mean he's... David decided to walk through the valley and there's also valley and shadow of death in this part of the leading. But the assurance is his. The one who is. For though you walk through the waters, I will be with you. The fires will not consume you. The key word is, wherever you are, I will be with you. If it's the one leading you, fire does not count. Waters does not count. What count is the one leading? So God, who sent him, not that he was showed. We know he was showed historically speaking. But the Bible says in Psalms 105 verse 17, to show you that he was, even though he was showed, he was actually sent by God. The one leading him sent him there. And he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was so. The key word was that he sent. They thought they were sending him, but God said, I'm sending a man ahead of time to go and prepare my, to a place because famine is coming. I need to send a man before them. That's God's leading. 